Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you the next guitar I'm going to be giving away in my guitar raffles for my Patreon members. If you want to win this guitar, you got to go sign up to my Patreon. The link is down in the description below. If you want to win the Rusty Frankenstrat, this is a guitar that was inspired by James Hetfield's Rusty Explorer. And now we're doing a Rusty Frankenstrat with all the same features. So I'm going to show you some of the parts that we already have for the guitar, how it's going, and explain the project a little more, and how to win the guitar. So if you want to win it for absolute free, you can have it, but you got to sign up to the Patreon page. I'm also going to be unboxing a couple guitars over here that just showed up today. And those guitars were given to me for a trade-in for, um, I'm doing a guitar build for somebody, and they offered to give me three guitars plus some cash. Well, the guitar's almost done. This is it here. I'll be showing you a little bit more of the guitar too. It's a Jackson Warrior. But they messaged me and said, look, it, instead of the remaining balance, can I send you two more guitars? So a total of five guitars I traded for this custom Jackson Warrior that I built. And I'm going to show you the Jackson Warrior. We're going to unbox these guitars. And I'm, I actually got the Jackson Warrior in on a trade months ago. So I'll be showing you guys a little bit of the memories. Maybe you guys even remember the Stealth Jackson Kelly that I rebuilt. It's a really cool guitar. We'll talk about that at the end of this video. Talk about this Jackson Warrior and do the unboxing. But I want to start with the giveaway. So I'm going to show you guys first the Rusty Frankenstrat stuff. If you guys like watching these unboxing videos and seeing all the little cool side deals that I got going on, then be sure to be subscribed to Guitar Guts 2, my second channel. Again, the link is down in the description below because I'm gonna have on Sunday another video. Got everything set up over here already. And I've done a couple local pickup deals, some video game deals, and I got a box of pickups, another guitar over there, a bunch of stuff. So I'm gonna be showing you guys that stuff on Sunday as well as um, some trade-in stuff that somebody sent me and the guitar that I'm doing for them. It's a Jackson Rhodes Super sick crackle Multicolor burst It is badass. It's for my customer Austin. So check it out Sunday I'm gonna have another video similar to this one over on the second channel Be sure to be subscribed to see that one now. Let's get into the stealth Frankenstrat here You can see I already got the body painted. It's got the clear on it, too and it's a typical strap body. This is something I've had actually around the shop. And it's painted already, ready to go. Nice uh, matte clear on it because the rusty Hetfield Explorer is matte black. So this thing is already painted and ready to go. We also have, um, and I'm not sure what kind of body it was, to be honest. It's a body that's, like I said, been hanging around the shop for a little while now. It's in great condition, though. So it's going to be paired up with this late night, or actually early 90s, Made in Korea Fender Stratocaster neck. I've bought a bunch of like 1992-ish Korean Stratocasters. They're great guitars because they're great to turn into Frankenstrat projects. And I've had like three of them that I've, that I've been sitting here hanging up over here on my guitar hanging area. And I decided when Ryan came to me, my assistant, with this idea, he said, I, want, I think we should build a rusty Frankenstrat. And I'm like, dude, I love that idea. That is so awesome. So that day, I grabbed one of these bodies. I was spraying a bunch of other guitars, matte black that day, um, Stealth Frankenstrats I'm working on. And I threw this one in the mix, painted it. Yesterday, I threw the matte clear on it, and I had one of these extra necks around. So I pulled the frets off it. I've already got it refretted. All this is gonna be on some type of video in the future because I'm documenting the whole rebuild of this guitar. And maybe it'll be an episode of Trash to Thrash in the future. By the way, people asking, where are all the episodes of Trash to Thrash? They're coming back. It's just that they take three three or four full days, 10-hour days, like 30 to 40 hours of editing to do one episode. So that's half of my work week right there, or you know, somewhere around half of my work week. And I've got a lot of customer guitars here to work on, and I can't be putting editing videos first because you know I don't really make much money from YouTube and all that. You make a lot more money working on guitars than you do working on videos for them. So... I'm documenting every guitar I'm working on still, but I just haven't been putting in the time to edit the video. So at some point, I'm gonna take a couple weeks off building guitars and I'm only gonna edit, probably around New Year's, I'm gonna only edit and I'm gonna get you guys a ton of new episodes of Trash to Thrash because I finished a handful of guitars and over the next two months, up until the end of the year, I think I'm gonna finish like six or seven more. So there's a lot of them. You can see a bunch hanging behind me here. A lot of these have clear coat on them. They're already done. They need to be sanded and polished and assembled. So I got a whole batch of guitars that are going to be finished up over the next couple months. And a lot of them are freaking ridiculously awesome. 
stuff that is so cool. I don't want to show too many spoilers, but if you're a member of the Patreon or the YouTube member, there's a lot of exclusive videos pretty much every single week I've been putting out like a 30 minute video. So if you want more content, go help support the channel, sign up to the Patreon, get a chance to win this guitar, and then sign up to the uh, YouTube members. If you don't care about the raffle, it's only five bucks to become a YouTube member, 10 bucks for the Patreon. But for Patreon, you get entered into the raffles for guitars and whatever else I feel like giving away. And I'm gonna be doing a lot more giveaways again because I've got a couple of guitars around here that I picked up real cheap or even were donated to the shop that I wanna turn around and just give back to you guys. So I feel bad that I haven't given a guitar away in like four or five months. And it's time to start getting back on those giveaways. Get over to the Patreon page if you want to win one of my creations. The memberships right now, there's not as many as before, so you got an even better chance of winning right now. Anyways, like I was saying, this neck here, it's a great maple neck from an early 90s Strat, refretted with jumbo frets, Stumac fret wire. This is high quality stuff. I just finished installing these a couple days ago. That neck, that body, I'm thinking... Um, I'll talk about the pickup in a second, actually. I was going to tell you about my pickup thoughts, but check this thing out here. So this is the pickguard that's going in it. It's the rusty Frankenstrap pickguard. My assistant, Ryan, cut this thing up for me. I threw the solution on it. It's showing up dark in here. Let me adjust these camera settings real quick so you can see. Yeah, look at that thing. That thing looks wicked, doesn't it? All rusted. And then I throw gloss clear over the whole thing sand it and throw more clear so it's extremely smooth you don't feel the texture and the gross gritty feel of of rust you feel nice smooth got a beautiful finish it's got a little texture to it i could like buff it out like level sand it and buff it and all that stuff but i don't think it's necessary for the pick guard i think a little bit of texture on it it wears it well it looks good so that's going to be going on that body oh dude this is going to be such a cool project and then i'm thinking um we're going to go with the emg 85 in the bridge I actually was looking through my pickup drawer. I've got a lot of pickups on hand. And for my giveaway guitars, I like to use just what's around, make something sick out of what I've got. And I've never been an 85 in the bridge kind of guy. If you're an EMG person, usually you'd put an 85 up in the neck. 81s are like the go-to bridge pickup for a lot of people. But uh, somebody recently showed me how good an 85 sounds in the, in the bridge position. It actually sounds awesome in the bridge position. So that's what we're going to do. I had a couple extra 85s and I was going to order an 81 and I thought about it and said, you know what, let's throw an 85 in there. Let's make this thing unique and different than every other EMG guitar out there. It's got a lot more mid tones and then the 81's a little more high screechy. This one's got a little more low end, a little more mid tone to it. So it's going to sound awesome. So if you want to win this thing, go sign up to the Patreon page. Like I said, the link is in the description below. And also you get access to the Discord, the Guitar Guts Discord chat, where you can go on there and share your builds with all these other guitar builder friends of mine that are on there. And we talk about our guitar collections. There's a, a regular general chat. We got workout uh, chat on there. We got all these different little chats within the Guitar Guts Discord. So the only way to get into the Guitar Guts Discord is to sign up to the Patreon. So go sign up for your chance to win this guitar and many other ones coming after it. So here's the first look of it kind of mocked up the, obviously the pick guard, the pickup neck, none of this stuff is mounted yet. And I haven't even decided fully what bridge I'm going to use on this guitar. It's probably going to be some type of strat type bridge because uh, I don't want to do a ton of routing on this thing and equip it with the Floyd Rose. And most people don't like Floyds. I love them, but a lot of people don't. So I want this thing to be something that a lot of people would want. But look how sick this looks. By the way, that fender is just a vinyl. That'll be coming off it before I finalize this guitar build. But yeah, look how sick this thing looks. Woo hoo! Gonna have a, a Guitar Guts signature kill switch in there, a black stealth kill switch, master volume, and the 81 there. I might put some cool stuff up in here. Not really sure yet. Haven't thought about that really. But some type of artifacts. I like when. You know, Eddie would put like the broken switch and a dummy pickup up in the neck. And in some of the Frankenstrats in the past that I built, I like to put like lighters and like different cool things in there that just are a little different. You know, maybe even the battery, maybe mount the battery up in there, maybe custom paint a battery or like get like, I don't know. We'll see what I do. But if you guys have any cool ideas, let me know in the comments as well as what color hardware do you think? Black is the obvious go to. But I already have on hand a bunch of chrome bridges and that would fit perfectly in there. So I might go with the chrome bridge. I'm not really sure. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments 
what color hardware this guitar should have. Look at those beautiful brand new frets. This neck was already routed for a Floyd Rose, so I'm going to modify a Floyd Rose nut to sit perfectly on this shelf here. But then I'm going to take it, take off the big points that stick up and make it look custom. Probably paint it black, but maybe if we go with chrome hardware or something else, maybe I'll make it match. Like I said, I haven't really planned it and planned that whole thing out. We still got a couple weeks till it needs to be finished. But in the next couple weeks, it will be done. And yeah, like I said, December 15th, we're going to be raffling this thing off to one lucky person. Now let's get these guitars unboxed. We'll show you what I got in them. And then I'm going to show you the guitar that is part of the trade that I'm giving to my customer, Jason. He sent me five guitars. Some of you probably saw the video where I was unboxing guitars a couple months ago. I don't remember if it was here on the main channel or if it was on the second channel because I do these box unboxing videos on both channels. But um, it was a Jackson RR24 charcoal with like the wood, the ash top showing through. Maybe you guys remember that one. If not, I'm going to link it in the description or I'll have a link at the end of this video so you can see it. That guitar, the RR24, we, I also got a Dean Vendetta from him, which is another guitar that'll probably be a giveaway guitar here for the Patreon members pretty soon because it's a killer guitar and it's neck through. It's got a Floyd Rose bridge and it's got a lot of potential. It's got really cool inlays on it and it's kind of a cheaper guitar, I think, but if, like I said, if I refret it, you know, like I did with that other last guitar, might be able to make it into an ultra shred machine. By the way, if you like one of these guitars I'm, I'm about to unbox and you really want it, send me an email, mark at guitarguts.com. Let's talk. I can rebuild it for you. I don't think I really want to just outright sell these ones. I think these ones I'd get a lot more value out of rebuilding them and then flipping them. Um... He gave me, so the Jackson RR24, the Dean Vendetta, and the Schecter Sun 3, the Super Shredder. Maybe you guys remember those guitars. A couple of those I outright did sell just to bring some cash into the shop. And because like the RR24, it's already a thousand dollar guitar. To me, for me to rebuild it, take five, you know, three to six months to rebuild it and repaint it and get it all set up and done. And then uh, find somebody who's willing to pay a thousand dollars plus all my labor that I got into it. I mean, this guitar would be fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars at that point. And selling guitars that expensive at this time when people are money's tight, inflation's going crazy, it's actually difficult. So um, I figured I'd rather just get this thing out of here. And also, I have no room in here. Like everywhere I I keep guitars is completely packed. I'm having to find creative new ways to store these things. And my guitar rack over there is just about full. I've got guitars hanging here. I got a row of them here, a row of them there. Two small rows over here. I got them on the wall. And then my personal collection's all in the house. But there are guitars like everywhere around here. So some of them that I get in on trades, it's going to take too long to get to. And it just makes more sense to outright sell it, especially if it's a, like a brand new condition guitar like the RR24 and the Schecter Sun that he sent me. Okay, so I, I know which one this is. You could tell what body shape that is, right? Kind of explorer -y, kind of flying V-like. Let's get this thing popped open, and I'll show you exactly what it is. You know, I was saying I have like 40 guitars out here in the shop that I've bought to rebuild and flip because I love doing guitar hunting. I love buying guitars and finding good deals. What I've been thinking about doing is setting up an area of my website that shows all the guitars that I have ready to start working on and then like have like a drop down box that would give you your options that of certain mods that you may want and let people buy the guitars off my website and choose all their own options because I don't have like a list of all the guitars that I have in stock here ready to start building but I bet you uh, some of you guys would be interested in something like that so let me know in the comments if that sounds like that'd be a cool feature and if that would persuade some of you guys to want to buy one of them. But I've got multiple Jacksons, LTDs, uh, Epiphones, Dean, Schecter, a lot of guitars over there on the rack. All right, here we go. It is a Charvel. I think it's called a Desolation Star. I think these were made around 2012-ish. It's got a lot of really cool features. 
I've never seen this model before and I've always loved star guitars. Some of you guys know I had an Edward star that I bought because I absolutely needed a star guitar in my collection. And then I never played it. So I ended up selling it like a year and a half later. But um, I sold it because somebody else traded me one of these exact same model guitars for some guitar work that I'm doing from Taryn actually sent one in. So I'll show you some more stuff on Taryn's guitar in the future. But this one from Jason uh, is the exact same model, exact same color even. This one's complete though. The one from Taryn I got was just a uh, stripped down, no bridge, no pickup. I don't know if this is all stock, but it's got a Seymour Duncan Invader bridge pickup, which is a killer bridge pickup. I didn't know it had that in it. Uh, Floyd Rose Special, it's got like black nickel hardware. The pointy Charvel style headstock, which very cool. My favorite Charvel headstock, of course. And it's actually like an abalone on the logo. So awesome pointy headstock there. Dang, this is a sick guitar. 24 fret star, rosewood fretboard, dot inlays. So this one I'll definitely be re rebuilding, repainting, and then selling it. If somebody out there wants a custom star, it's got a single humbucker pickup, 24 frets, uh, standard pointy headstock, non-reverse is what I mean by standard. It's a sweet guitar, a lot of potential here that I see. I'm not familiar with this model, but since this one's assembled, I actually probably will plug this in and jam out on it a little bit and get my, you know, get an opinion of this. The, the neck feels pretty good. It's a little thicker than some other Charvels I've played, but it feels nice. It feels substantial. It feels good. But dang, first impressions, pretty sweet guitar here. All right, let's get into guitar number two. Jason told me he bought these guitars to do uh, potential flips on. Like, I think he bought them, got them, got probably a good deal on them, and then he said they just kind of sat there. He never really did anything, never worked on them. So now that his, his warrior over here is nearing completion, he thought, hey, this might be a good time to offload those things and get a nice discount on his remaining bill. I'm not taking trade-ins on as much stuff these days because like I said, I've got so many guitars here, more than I can actually work on from trade-ins and from like the deals that I find online that, that I don't really need to be taking in many more trade-ins at this point because they're coming in quicker than I can rebuild them and, and, and sell them. So certain ones, it makes sense to just outright sell, but with something like a star like that, I think that the white paint job, not that great. I mean, it's pretty basic, pretty average. I think we could do something a lot cooler if somebody wants to buy it and get it rebuilt. Chrome tremolo bar. So crazy that it, uh, another Charvel star came in because I've been dying for a star for basically 25 years since I was a kid. Never really found a good opportunity to buy one. And then right after I buy an Edwards one for like a thousand dollars, two of them fall in my lap and they're Charvels. So I sold the Edwards because, you know, I've got a couple Edwards guitars, but at this point I don't own any Charvels and I figured it's kind of cool to throw a Charvel back in the collection. Plus single bridge pickup. I mean, it's pretty cool for a star guitar. Perfect for like an EVH type, type refinish. So I'm going to keep the other star and I'm not sure what kind of finish I should do for myself. Should I do some type of burst? Should I do some type of tiger stripes? Maybe stealth stripes. I don't have any stealth guitars. I don't personally own any crackle guitars or any uh, striped. Actually, I do have one EVH stripe that I painted, but like all these guitars that I rebuild, I don't have guitars like those. I built the first ones all for myself, like the crackles, splatters, um, striped guitars. I built them all for myself, but then people wanted to buy them. And when you're in business as a guitar rebuilder, that's your goal is to sell them. So I was happy to sell them because I know if I did one, I could always do another one later. But then it turns out that, you know, my creations, uh, people, it's pretty cool that they like them and they want to buy them. And, and to not have one of your own creation is a pretty cool problem to have in my opinion. But yeah, so maybe I'm thinking for the star, maybe I'll do some type of awesome crackle or maybe a crackle splatter like I did on that one Jackson. Crackle and splatter on one guitar. Maybe I'll do a striped as like a dedication to EVH. I mean, 
I think these stars would look really cool with bumblebee stripes on them. So, or even reverse bumblebee. That would be super sick. Yellow with black stripes. Let me know in the comments. What, what would you do if you had a star guitar? Like, say I was giving one away and you won it. And I said, I'll paint it for you however you like. What paint job would you want on your star? You know, I was saying the trash to thrash videos, they take me so long to edit that it's kind of hard for me to make the time because with my work schedule, I work seven days a week. And if I'm spending three and a half days out of the seven just editing, that means I'm only rebuilding people's guitars for three days because I also got to answer emails and there's a lot of other things I got to do. Go pick up and ship out things. And that, so that's like half of my time would be more than half of my time would just be editing. And you don't really make much money on, on YouTube at the level I'm at, you know, maybe like less than a couple hundred bucks a month. So for all that work I'm putting in editing the videos, it does get me more customers, but it doesn't pay the bills like building guitars do. So my time really has to be focused on working on guitars rather than putting out videos. But like videos like this one here, this is stuff I would be doing anyways. Very little editing would need to be done to this video. So I can pump out ones like this pretty easily, but to do trash to thrash videos is pretty tough. It's very time consuming. And same thing with Sunday Morning Shred. If you've noticed that Sunday Morning Shred hasn't been up in a while, that's because it's, it's so time consuming. It takes like five hours a week to do a, a one, you know, one hour show. Basically it's like an hour or two to research the topics I'm gonna talk about and get things prepared for the show. Then an hour of recording it and then uh, loading all the files onto the computer and then editing the intro and the outro and any little flubs or mistakes I make or adding pictures in or all that kind of stuff and making a thumbnail, uploading it and posting it to all the different social media platforms. That stuff all takes about five hours, sometimes a little more than that. And I'm like rushing like on a Friday at the end of the night to get it edited and done. And then Saturday, I'm trying to get it up and scheduled. So by Sunday morning, it's ready for you guys. And it just ends up being stressful for me when I already have so much other stuff going on. And then the real nail in the coffin is that the last few episodes have gotten under a thousand views, which for a little while they were getting a thousand to 2000. And I was pretty happy with that. But when it's like 480 views over the first three or four days of it being up, it's really not getting the exposure that's worth my time for a Sunday morning shred video. I love doing those videos. Like guitar hunting and talking about guitars and, and I, I love doing that stuff and I love making videos, but like to put five hours in and then, you know, get literally nothing back. Like the second channel makes almost nothing like 20 bucks a month or something like that. So to put in all that time, five hour, five hours, each episode, four episodes a month, that's 20 hours. And I'm literally getting 20 bucks a month from that channel. I don't think that Sunday Morning Shred brings in new customers. I think Trash to Thrash brings in a lot of new customers, but Sunday Morning Shred, I don't get, I don't feel like I get much of a benefit other than the enjoyment of doing it and the community, which I really enjoy reading your guys' comments and all that stuff. But if I get such little back, like literally a dollar an hour to do it, I would rather spend that 20 hours hanging out with my baby, you know, my baby. I got a, a two year old son or hanging out with my fiance and our daughter and being with the family and just taking that time off that, that five hours to, to taking that time off from family time or from working on other people's guitars, it just doesn't really make sense to be honest. So at some point it can come back, I think, but I got to put more production and more time into it, I think, to make more people want to watch it because it's really for the hardcores and I appreciate the hardcores, but it just, yeah, it takes a lot of time out of the, out of the month when you add up the amount of hours. 20 hours a month. That's a lot of time. So check this thing out. We got a Jackson Kelly. This is a made in Japan. I think this is like a late nineties model. 1996. Actually, you could tell by the serial number. Um, it's got like that weird silver satin silver hardware that Jackson was putting on guitars in the, the late nineties or mid nineties. Oh, it's got some Wilkinson pickups. So those are aftermarket. It's got that cool, satin silver bridge matching selector switch all the hardware on the neck plate the strap buttons yeah the jack plate all that stuff matches that's pretty cool so since it's all there if i rebuild this to flip it i might leave all this hardware on it and do something kind of around that color theme something that's going to match that well because that is a unique color scheme that's cool 
It's got a crazy sparkle to it. I don't know if you could tell. Yeah, now I think you can. Really awesome deep blue sparkle inside that finish. This is a cool guitar, 24 frets. Oh, it's got shark fins. I didn't notice that. So it's made in Japan. Dual humbuckers, Floyd Rose, 24 frets, shark fin inlays, reverse headstock. This thing is going to be sick. So I'll, I don't know if I'm going to uh, do this one as a giveaway, but I'll definitely flip it and sell it. If you're interested in having me rebuild this thing for you, let me know. Send me an email, mark at guitarguts.com. And first come, first serve. Whatever you want done to it, I can do. Yeah, this thing's pretty awesome. Check that out. Dang. Yeah, that glitter is just bright as hell. I got the Pearloid shark fin inlays, one of Jackson's coolest shark fin inlays, and the reverse shark fin. That's actually going the opposite way because it's got the reverse headstock. Truss rod cover is missing, no big deal. Can always make another one of those. Dang, actually I have a metal one here that we just built for a Jackson that we aren't gonna end up using, so that'll probably go on this guitar. Woo hoo, look at that sparkle, that is insane. All right, so the last thing I'm going to be showing you guys today is this Warrior. This is a Warrior that I got in on a trade deal from uh, Tyler, who sent it in. He never loved it after he bought it, and he really liked the Stealth Jackson Kelly that I rebuilt a while ago. The Stealth Jackson Kelly was an awesome one. It was flat black with gloss black splatter, had a set of EMG 81 and 60 in brushed metal, so it was a really cool guitar. One of the first ones that I rebuilt to sell that was a trash to thrash uh, guitar, and yeah, he wanted it, he wanted that thing, so he traded me the Warrior and a little bit of cash for that guitar, and then Jason hit me up, who this guitar is now being rebuilt for, and he told me, dude, I really want a Jackson Warrior Super Custom. He sent me this long list of lots of expensive mods, and we agreed on a price plus three guitars to trade in. And after the three guitars were here, this guitar is nearing completion. It's actually got tons of clear on it right now. You can't feel the splatter at all. And I don't know if you could tell, but this is actually color shifting splatter. So the, sh the splatter is actually purple from some angles. And it's always so hard to catch it on camera. Oh yeah, you can see it like now that it's starting to change purple. Oh yeah. So from this way, if you go across here, look at that, turning purple. The splatter is color shifting. It looks so sick, super high gloss. It's got enough gloss on the body now, but the headstock still needs a little more because we did a custom style Jackson logo that instead of having like the holes in it, this looks more, a little more like the, some of the custom shops. Um, it's got a shadow behind it, a silver shadow behind the white Jackson logo. So really cool, different type of headstock logo than the normal Jacksons have. And of course we got the splatter on the headstock, but he wanted the splatter underneath the logo. So the challenge with this was if you put the, the logo on directly over the splatter, it's going to be all bumpy and weird. So what I did was I sprayed a bunch of clear over the splatter and the paint and then sanded it level. Once I got up to where it was level, I put the logos on and now I'm rebuilding, I'm building up the clear coat so that it matches the logo so you won't feel the logo and right now I can feel the logo still I can tell it's sticking up pretty high so it's gonna need a bit more clear on the headstock only I'd say the body and the neck have enough clear on them and I don't want to just keep adding more and more clear if it doesn't need it because it clears not cheap so so I'll probably be just masking off the entire guitar except for just the face here so as I'm spraying other guitars clear coats I'll just bring this out and get the face of it built up to where that that logo is flush and flat but yeah this thing is going to be so sick so this will be on an episode of trash to thrash don't you worry i appreciate you guys tuning back into the channel today be sure to hit that subscribe button hit that like button share the channel with your guitarist friends i need the extra support guys so please go share the video on your facebook your instagram wherever you can it's super appreciated leave your comments down below on the things i was asking you guys about you know with the hardware color for the Rusty Frankenstrat. Go sign up to the Patreon if you want to win that thing, by the way. And also, I want to hear what you guys think of the Jackson Kelly and the Star Guitar. What paint job would you put on a Star if you're going to get a custom Star? So 
Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out next Sunday, or actually this coming Sunday. I'm going to have another video very similar where I'm going to be unboxing and showing you some of the other stuff that's back here right now. There's a guitar back there. There's a bunch of stuff over on the table. And I'm going to be showing you guys um, one of the guitars that I'm rebuilding for somebody. Another preview that is so sick. So over on Guitar Guts 2 this Sunday, be subscribed to both channels. And I'm going to be trying to get videos up on both channels every week still. So go check it out this Sunday. I appreciate you guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Rock on, my friends.